Namaskaram everyone. Fever with rash is a very important topic for undergraduates, postgraduates and practitioners. So recently while preparing a lecture for the MBBS students, I thought why not make a video on the same. So let's first know what are the various types of rash. According to the site of eruption, a rash can be an exanthem if it, is appears, if it appears on the skin or it can be enanthem if it appears on the mucosa which is typically seen as coplic spot in measles. Depending on the morphology, the rash can broadly be classified into two main categories proliferative or elevated and second is desquamative or ulcerative. Proliferative rashes can again be macule, papule, plaque, urticaria, wheel and vesicle, bulla or pustule if they are filled with something. So macule has a flattened top while papule is slightly elevated but it is less than 0.5 cm in size. Compared with a papule, a plaque is also elevated but it is more than 0.5 cm in size. Vesicle is again elevated from the surface but is filled with fluid and the size is less than 0.5 cm. Compared with this, the lesion, another lesion is the bulla which is filled with fluid but is more than 0.5 cm in size. Then there is a lesion referred to as pustule which is kind of vesicle or bulla but it is filled not with fluid, it is filled with pus. Now depending on the morphology, the various causes of different kinds of rashes have been mentioned here in the scene. The causes for petechial or purpural rash, then the causes for macular or maculopapular rash, causes for nodular rash, urticarial rash, vesicular rash and finally diffuse erythema which is also referred to as carlatiniform rash with desquamation. Now depending on the site, rash can either be peripheral or it can be central. Peripheral rash is primarily seen in the traditional disease smallpox which has now been eradicated and central rash is classically seen in varicella. So smallpox is variola and chickenpox is varicella. Depending on the configuration, the rash can be sarcinate, it can be archiform, it can be linear, serpiginous that is snake like, annular, target like a dartboard, gyrate and zoosteriform. So now coming on to approach to diagnosing the etiology of the rash. The first thing is we have to take a proper history. Prodromal symptoms like fever, cough, rhinorrhea distribution and evolution of rash for example the measles rash typically begins from behind the ear and then spreads centripetally whereas the varicella rash generally appears first on the abdomen then associated symptomatology for example itching redness discharge whether it is purulent or fluid history of drug intake for example antibiotics and nsaids what drug since when and the temporal relationship with the drug of the rash exposure to infections for example dengue and scrub typhus and travel to endemic areas especially for people living abroad because india is endemic to many diseases with rash on examination we must first identify the site of rash whether it is an exanthem or enanthem as I had discussed earlier and where was the rash first seen as I also have told earlier like measles generally appears on the face or behind the ear and varicella on the tummy. The distribution of rash that we have already discussed peripheral distribution for example classically was seen in not now not seen nowadays the smallpox and central distribution in other viral illnesses like uh, measles and varicella. A complete general examination. For example, if there is non-purulent conjunctivitis, then it is a pathognomic feature of Kawasaki disease. 
and involvement of the reticular endothelial system which is seen in patients with collagen vascular disorders so we can generally understand what category does the rash belong to so traditionally depending on the basis of the day of appearance of rash rash was initial the fever with rash was initially classified as per the days so first day disease was measles or rubella when we were preparing for our post graduate entrance this used to be asked the second disease was scarlet fever caused by streptococcus pyogenes the third disease was german measles or rubella fourth disease was staphylococcal scalded skin syndrome caused by staphylococcal strains that make epidermolytic or exfoliative toxin fifth disease is erythema infectiosum caused by parvovirus b19 infection and sixth disease was roseola infantum or exanthem subitum caused by human herpes virus 6 or 7 so we see that primarily there are three major categories of causes first is the infections in which we have viral and bacterial infections primarily and the second are the non infectious causes in which we have two main categories collagen vascular diseases and drug hypersensitivity rash so basically there are three broad etiological groups infections collagen vascular disorders and drug hypersensitivity rea- reaction now coming on to the individual diseases in measles the rash is erythematous confluent that is generally stick to each other macular papula begin behind the ears and forehead and progresses downward the rash resolves in the same order with the residual brownish discoloration and desquamation which fades over the next 7 to 10 days coplic spots pathognomonic of measles consist of gray white sand like lesions with surrounding erythema seen in the buccal mucosa opposite to the lower second molar tooth and they are pathognomonic of measles as i have already said so this you can see in this picture in scarlet fever the rash is typically diffuse you cannot make a pinpoint you cannot pinpoint a definite rash separately it is erythematous blanchable and finely papular like sandpaper begins around the neck spreads over the trunk and extremities generally spares the face and the rash fades with desquamation after 3 to 4 days and we know that strawberry tongue is very important finding in scarlet fever the rash of rubella is are minute discrete this is in comparison with the measles rash measles rash were confluent and rubella rash are discrete that is they can be demarcated separately the rash appears within 24 hours of onset of the prodromal symptoms spreads rapidly from the face to trunk and extremities and disappears all together by third day unlike measles which usually take 7 to 10 days to disappear we also know that posterior cervical and posterior post auricular lymphadenopathy is very commonly seen in rubella erythema infectiosum has homogeneous erythema over the cheeks demonstrating the typical slapped cheek appearance and this is often asked in the exam associated with a reticulate maculo articular exanthem over the proximal extremities and occasionally over the distal extremities and trunk also the rash undergoes repeated fading and recurrence triggered by local irritants high temperature and emotional stress in exanthem subitum there are discrete macular or maculo papular rash known as exanthem subitum over the neck and trunk which begins to disappear in a few hours in a hours only and this we know is caused by human herpes virus 6 and 7 in varicella the rash occurs in crops they occur in crops and evolve to the stages of macule papule vesicle and ultimately 
undergo encrustation they involve mainly the trunk and proximal end of extremities the rash disappears after 3 to 7 days leaving behind hypo or hyperpigmented macules which persist for days to weeks now dengue fever as you can see in the picture there is diffuse erythema and someone who has put four fingers on the trunk on the chest has found that the it leads to blanching so this is the typical blanching of dengue fever so flushing is seen in dengue fever within 48 hours of fever and this is basically flushing but as soon as you remove your hands the this blanchable area gets flushed again a transient generalized macular rash develops within 48 hours of onset of fever and the second phase of illness is associated with a generalized morbidly form macular papular rash sparing the palms and soles in rickettsial diseases the rash is macular or maculopapular occasionally petechial diseases may be associated with a typical painless scar with an erythematous rim at the site of vector bite as you can see in the picture now hand foot and mouth disease which recently became very common is characterized by oval gray blisterous rashes with erythematous base over hands feet and buttocks painful abthals ulcers can be seen in mouth and the rash generally dissolve, resolves by itself in 5 to 7 days so the management of most of the viral illnesses is conservative gyanotic crosti syndrome also referred to as papular acrodermatitis of childhood affects children between 1 to 6 years of age and the viruses which are implicated to cause this are namely hepatitis b epstein barr virus cmv and coxsackie virus so sometimes we don't know what is the etiology of the virus and we generally don't know how to treat the patient so if the etiology of rash is viral then it generally disappears resolves by itself in gyanotic crosti syndrome the rash is composed of symmetric homogeneous flat topped pink brown papules distributed classically on the cheeks extensor extremities and buttocks hemorrhagic or moist eczematous papules may also be seen the rash generally lasts for around 15 to 20 days and sometimes even longer so there is no need to panic you have to counsel the parents accordingly now there are some other infections for example in leptospirosis the rash may be urticarial petechi purpural or desquamating type I have discussed only the common infections over here, not everyone. In infectious mononucleosis, there is a maculopapular rash which may take the form of erythema multiforme or urticaria. The exanthem occurs in 3 to 13% of cases and increases to 50% if treated with ampicillin or amoxicillin. In chikungunya fever, the rash is itchy, transient, maculopapular distributed over trunk and extremities appearing 4 to 8 days after fever and arthritis chikungunya is recognized by intense joint pain and migratory polyarthritis now there are four kinds of rash which are which are named from with the term erythema so these are quite confusing i also used to get confused quite many times so i thought I'll solve the confusion here and itself here itself so there are four kinds of erythema erythema migrans erythema marginatum erythema multiforme and erythema nodosum so erythema migrans is an annular rash it is typically seen in Lyme's disease caused by Borrelia it may be uniformly erythematous or may take the form of a target lesion with necrosis and vesicles in the center axilla periumbilical area thigh and groin are the usual sites of development of this kind of rash the rash enlarges to average around 15 centimeters with a sharply demarcated peripheral reddish band about 1 to 2 centimeters wide as you can see in the picture and resolves without treatment in four weeks Erythema marginatum, as you can see in the picture on the other hand, 
is one of the major diagnostic criteria of acute rheumatic fever. It consists of erythematous, serpiginous, macular, non-pruritic rash with central pallor, primarily occurring over the trunks and extremities. Erythema multiforme is a cutaneous and mucosal hypersensitivity reaction to drugs with characteristic lesion. It, it is triggered by antigenic stimuli and is manifested by papillae, bullous and necrotic lesions and its evolution is generally favorable. It is most commonly seen in viral, bacterial and fungal infections like HSV1 and 2, mycoplasma pneumonia and drugs like antibiotics, ATT, herbal agents and topical therapies. And finally, erythema nodosum. It is an acute nodular septal paniculitis. Paniculitis is inflammation of the underlying fat characterized by the sudden onset of erythematous firm, solid, deep nodules or plaques that are painful on palpation and mainly localized on the extensor surfaces of the legs. They have a typical histologic appearance regardless of the etiology and the common etiologies are infections, antibiotics, malignancy and inflammatory bowel disease. So thank you so much. I hope I could make things easier to remember by relating them to photographs. Please share for maximum benefit of all. Thank you so much.